So a little bit about what I do. Um, so I've had a lab here at the University of Pittsburgh now for a little bit more than a year. Um, what my lab is interested in doing is basically to determine um, high resolution structure, structures of membrane transport proteins, particularly ones in the nervous system. Um, and to do that, an essential kind of first characterization of our purified protein is to actually measure some sort of radio ligand binding. And most of the proteins we're studying are really medically important proteins. Um, and so there are tritium ligands available for many of them. So this is basically an, a, a first step that we do in order to understand if like our preparation of protein is active and if we can get it into the correct conformation such that when it goes on the electron microscope, we're able to actually uh, determine the structure of the, of the protein in an actual like functional state. All right, so what I'm gonna do today is uh, walk you through a number of different experiments that we've done and basically how the nanospa reagent has enabled us to, uh, to, to complete a lot of these, um, these studies. All right, so this first project, um, we're studying a membrane transport protein. Um, and we had done quite a bit of characterization of this, of this protein. We were able to purify it um, and show that it could bind radio ligands using basically an indirect assay where we were looking at thermal shifts. So we're pretty confident that the protein we were producing was correct. Um, and so when we obtained a radio ligand, um, we thought that you know, measuring binding should be relatively straightforward. It turned out it was not. Um, so this is one of the first experiments that we did here. So we took our purified protein, we mixed it with some copper YSI beads at about a milligram per mil. Um, we added varying amounts of our 3H labeled ligand. Um, and um, in the gray bars here, you can see um, these are our controls here, where we've added 10 micromolar of a cold competitor, basically to compete off the counts that are bound to the protein. What you can see here are a number of things. First of all, our total counts are, are really low. Um, and second of all, there's really no difference between the, the test and the control. Um, and we did many experiments like this where we tried to optimize the assay and we just really didn't get anywhere with this. Um, so we were really quite stuck, I would say. Um, so um, another thing that my lab does to, um, to make sure that everything is, is working correctly is we look at binding of the protein to the copper YSI beads. These proteins are his tag, but they also have a, uh, a fluorescent tag. Um, in this case, it's an m venus tag. So we can look at the amount of m venus that's associated with the beads. And here you can see that actually there's a large amount of m venus most of the m venus is actually associated with the beads, and there's relatively little that's unbound. So our protein is indeed binding to these beads. So um, then we did a series of other, um, other control experiments. One thing to do is to, is to, take, the, um, to, to take membranes that are expressing the protein of interest and to mix them with vitridium and ligand and measure binding. So it's basically just done the solution. So here you can see um, we've got a large amount of counts that are associated with these membranes. And then when we add our control competitor ligand, we're able to compete away those counts. So the protein seems to be expressed. It's probably folded correctly, at least most of it. Um, and this looks pretty good. 